Hello, friends. Welcome to Taxonomy Online Mathematics. Today we want to have a, a tutorial on the topic Plane Geometry 2, an introduction into it. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so and subscribe. Like the video at the end if you find it educative. Now, under Plane Geometry 2, which is a continuation of Plane Geometry 1, we are going to basically deal with the part of a circle. So, as a, a revision of our previous knowledge, we have to know that a circle has so many parts. This is the center. So, a line drawn from the center to meet any part on the circumference. That is to meet any part of the circle is our radius. So the radius could be horizontal as we are seeing it. It could be vertical. It could be any direction. We also know that if I have a line or a point with a two point on a circle and I join that two point with a line, that is what we call a chord. So a chord is any line that joins two points on a circle. So if a chord passes to the center, as in this case, the center is here and there's a point here, I have another point. If a line is drawn to join these two points, this line is what we are calling a diameter. So a diameter divides a circle into what? Two equal parts. Two of a radius give us a diameter. So two radius give you a diameter. A diameter is also a chord that passes through the center. Now, as we are seeing that this is a chord. Now, from here to here, as in outside, is what we call an arc. It's just part of the circumference. So if you cut any part of the circumference, this becomes an arc. We know the circumference is a, a this around the circle. So an arc will just be a part of it. If I label here AB, the curvature, that curvature is called an arc, arc AB. At the same time, the line or the straight line is called a chord. Now, the space between the arc and this chord is what we call segment. So if I want to take into consideration the, the segment, uh, the chord AB, so it means that I have a space here. Don't forget, this is also an arc. But this arc is longer than this. Therefore, this is a major arc. This is what? A minor arc. So see, this is a minor arc. This makes this become a minor segment. Whilst the whole of this becomes a major segment. Alright, if I have... Let me draw it a different place. I mentioned earlier one that this is a... A radius. So if two radius inclined, if you have a radius and another radius inclined at the center, now the region between two radius and this, which is also an arc, is what we call a sector. So here also, this arc is smaller or as in length than the arc here, therefore this becomes minus sector major sector. So this is our center. So this is going to be a radius, radius, this. So this will also be an arc. So this becomes sector, minor, and major sector. Now, if you have any line that touches the circle at any point, we call that word tangent. So a tangent is just touching the circle at a point. It could also be that it is just starting it at the point. Any line that touch or connect any point on a circle become a tangent. So these are some of the parts of uh, a circle which we will be using uh, in our circle or theory, which is plane geometry one, uh, geometry two. For us to start with the theorems. Let's take the term 1. So, 
under that theorem, if I have a circle, normally we draw this using a protractor and a compass so that we can easily measure. So if you are also, you can try this on your own and see whether we can be able to prove that. Now, if I have this, we know an angle is formed when two lines meet. Even though this segment, this place is going to be called a sector. But here, we can say that this is going to produce an angle at the center. If I join that line with this, the angle produced, I can see I'm having, if I label here O, A, B, C, I'll be having two angle B produced. That is A, O, B, and A, C, B. The angle here, if I label here A, then the angle here will be labeled what? 2A. Meaning twice the angle at the circumference is the angle in the center. Or the angle at the center is twice the angle at what? The circumference. So the theorem 1 is saying that. So by the theorem, which we are going to be using in solving the questions, we have theorem 1 is saying that. The angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle at the circumference. And that should be suspended by the same word, arc, or the same chord. In this case, we can say this is arc AB. If I draw a straight line from here, still, this property will still work, or this theorem will still work. Because this is a chord AB. We suspend an angle at the center 2A, the same called AB is substantially the angle at the center. So this theorem works. Now, what if the circle is in this form? Do you think this can also be applied by the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, which is subtended by the same arc. So let's check whether the arc AB is forming an angle O here. The same arc AB is what produces the angle at C. So I can also say that if this place is X, then definitely this becomes what? 2X. So you can see that this can also be true. What of if we have it drawn this way? We have this. Let me still score here O. Let me say A, B, D. I'm seeing the angle suspended by the at AB is also going to be at the center here. The line we are seeing here, AB, the at AB still have a line that sustains the angle at the circumference. So if I label here to be B, then I need to have here to be what? 2B. So don't forget the opposite is also true. As in half of this, sorry, half of this will give us this. If I'm looking for this angle and I've been given this, this could have been half of this to give me this. The same way, if I'm looking for B and I've been given this angle, then I should be able to have this to produce the angle at the circumference. I believe we got the concept clear. All right. Now, let's see. Now, let's look at this diagram carefully. We can see if I label it A, B, C. We are seeing angle A, B, C. It having an angle of Y. The same angle A, O, C. Also have the angle there. But you can see this seems to be opposite. They seem to be apart. But we know that under uh, geometry 1, we know what you call a type of angles, reflex angle, 
obtuse angle, acute angle. And the angle formed at what? O have two angles. One, the angle X here is going to be an uh, obtuse angle. Then I can also have an angle behind that. Going to be a reflex angle. So if I am turning this circle upside down, using the arc AC, this arc, it is subtending an angle at the center. This two arc subtends an angle what? At this place. You can see this arc as in here. Subtend the angle at the back. The same arc is subtending an angle Y. So in looking for this, it's going to be the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So these angles and these are also going to be the same as in per this property. Don't forget, we can find the y, the x, in addition of this first uh, plane geometry. Total angles at the point, give you what? 360. So these are the various types of what? Uh, theory 1. We say that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. I believe you get the concept. All right, let's take a question, which is not just by tutorial. So now pause the video and see if we are to label A, B, C, D. Try and see if you can get the value of X. Can you spot the property we just discussed? The angle at the center. We can forget, don't forget that the X is at the center. But the arc BC sustain that angle. The same arc BC sustain the angle at the circumference. So per the theorem, we are going to say that the angle BOC B -O -C is going to be twice the angle B D C. Don't forget the BOC is the X we are looking for. So 2 times 57 degrees. And I believe that they give us 14. So 1 times that 1, 1. No, that should be 4, 1 degree. 57, 2. So we have this to be 14, 1 times this 10. Plus that. So that will give us 400, 114 degrees per the property. All right. The next uh, theorem will be delved in the next uh, 